Okay, so this is the fourth and final video in the Sales 101 series. Um, this one's going to be quite light. Um, it's only going to really cover the sales literature and a little bit of activity management. So um, you may be kind of asking what is sales literature. So under sales you've got this here. It's not really a, a talked about kind of um, piece of functionality really. Um, but it, is, it definitely has its place and it can be quite useful as well. So we'll talk through that and, um, and go through some scenarios with that. Um, and the activity management is just basic activity management, just some of the views and things like that that you may not be aware of that you can utilize when managing kind of your to-do list. So let's crack on and start with sales literature. So to access sales literature, it's under the sales um, section of the sitemap. And you can see here that you actually um, get quite a lot of kind of examples to um, to use as standard. So I've not made all these. These will, these all come as standard. So if I open one, so let's just kind of um, let's just talk through for a second what a sales a piece of sales literature is. I mean, the literal sense of it's it's a piece of um, and I don't want to say literature. It's a piece of um, a grouped piece of information basically. So this could be about your products. Um, this can be and one of the kind of ways that a lot of kind of um, blogs and kind of the help and train insights actually kind of tell you to use it for is also competitors as well which I actually find really interesting so you cannot just have all your kind of sales products or your sales kind of like campaign information offers um, kind of if you're selling CRM for example or if you if you're a partner it could be um, kind of a condensed version of the licensing that could be a really good way of putting it because everyone has access to this in CRM essentially um, so it's quite a good way to put it. Obviously, SharePoint is an, is an alternative place, um, which is probably what people use as an alternative to this. Um, but we'll talk through some of the um, kind of reasons why CRM is, is is still a good place for that kind of information. Um, but in terms of the competitor side, actually having competitor information available is quite useful. So from the Microsoft Dynamics standpoint, if you're a Dynamics partner, obviously if you have kind of Salesforce and other CRM systems um, that kind of compete against Dynamics, having that information readily available can be quite um, useful, not just from a time saving perspective, just probably from offering better customer service in that sales life cycle. Um, so hopefully that kind of increases your understanding a little bit in terms of what sales literature actually is in itself. And um, it's very, it's, I sometimes kind of think it's quite similar to the knowledge man management in terms of the knowledge base articles, but it's just not as rich, not as functional as, um, as that. But there's definitely some similarities there. So the idea is that you've got just your normal title. Um, and this, similar to the knowledge articles, um, utilizes the subject hierarchy, which you set in the administration area of CRM. Um, and then you've then also got the type as well. So you can actually then also group based on the reason for, for why you're creating this piece of sales literature. And then you've got your description there, which can just describe what it is. So if it's a grouped piece of information, it's normally handy to kind of put that in there. So in the kind of central column and the right hand column you've kind of got two kind of uh, quite key kind of all well, three technically pieces of it of um, uh, information that you can relate to the sales literature so the idea is that you um, have the attachments this is the documents that you can upload to it and you can just f literally just fill this in and it'll upload it very similar to the knowledge um, knowledge management functionality but then you can also link it to products so if this is something like licensing details and actual pricing details and so on you can actually link it to your products as well now then the competitors as well so if you go ahead and click this you can actually link it to then people in terms of the competitors so you might be kind of thinking what actually is this all this is technically static information in the system and yes that that's not that's not wrong um, uh, essentially what you're doing is you're making um, and this is why I always consider it similar to the knowledge article functionality and also to some cases the product catalog functionality because both of those scenarios require a maintenance so that there's kind of a sort of life cycle in those and this is why you've got this expiration date and employee contact so you can see who manages this piece of sales literature who should be the person that should be managing it perhaps when the expiration date comes up um, so it's not certainly not as rich as the product catalog and the knowledge article in terms of this not got a huge life cycle especially the knowledge base articles because they have a huge kind of like draft status all that kind of stuff um, 
and uh, and and that that kind of isn't really relevant with sales literature but it still has it's very akin to that it still has something that hey this is actually only valid for 2016 for 2017 actually there's you know we need to do something new and that could be something that this employee contact actually has perhaps a dashboard uh, for so if they have uh, those kind of responsibilities they could simply have a dashboard with all the sales literature that's expiring in the next month so that could be a, a very good way of, of um utilizing this information and why this information is quite good in uh, in dynamics um so the the kind of the other side of it and very similar from a reporting standpoint is you've also then got the products and the competitors so you can also do advanced finds so whether these are one off or you want to save them as views embed them in dashboards and so on it's completely up to you that's the amazing thing about dynamics and an advanced find but if say for example if you link a product on here um, let's just do the top and just carry on. And you can essentially kind of then say, well, I want all the sales literature that relates to this product. And you can see that my one comes up. So um, if that was just a one-off thing, so say for example I've got a sale, maybe they're on the phone right now and I've just pretty much put the phone on my ear and my shoulder and I'm just frantically typing to try to find some information because I actually have no idea about this product. You can quickly find some kind of key information in the system just by using advanced find which you're already pretty familiar with anyway um, and it literally took me less than 30 seconds to do that advanced find it's very very simple to use and the same thing with competitors so if someone's saying oh, actually I've got a price from this person or this person's offering me this and and so on then you can simply then look for the sales literature to do with that competitor and actually validate it is it what they're saying is true um, and then you can also then possibly relate it to some further um, sales literature as well so um, in terms of the final kind of piece of functionality in this is you've got again very similar to the knowledge article uh, functionalities you've got this kind of send as email um, uh, functionality and what this allows you to do is pretty much embed your um, uh, your your attachment into an email so the one that I just clicked didn't have an attachment this one does here so if I do send as email you can see here that very similar to the um, to the, the knowledge article, it pretty much adds that as an attachment all automatically. It's very easy. So say, for example, that person's still on that phone um, and you want to um, just quickly actually go, the, the competitors give you that, that wrong information. This is actually the real competitor's information and this is why we are so much better. Um, and you can just ping that email in an instant. It's about customer service even though you're selling and that's that's very important that's kind of the the kind of angle of, of sales literature and certainly my angle and how I understand it anyway so that's pretty much just the walkthrough of the sales literature I'm um, nice and light and then the final part to this video will be covering a little bit of activity management Okay, so this next part is just going to cover a very quick run through of activity management. So I kind of felt this was quite important because the thing is with the sales process is that, okay, you've got kind of like the lead to uh, to kind of like the opportunity quote um, and order kind of process and obviously invoice. Um, but you've also, throughout that kind of process, you're going to be talking to the client, you're going to be kind of interacting with, with them, kind of doing appointments and so on. And kind of the key part and the key story to that is kind of the activities. And obviously you can do that through the kind of the that, that kind of middle pane. So if I just navigate quickly to a lead. You, you can do that using um, using this kind of quick quick entry form here so if you want to add a, add a phone call add a task and so on um, but one of the kind of things that I definitely kind of wanted to highlight is the fact that you don't just have to manage your activities on an actual record um, and th again this is one of the, the awesome things about dynamics is so if I just go to the sales section and go to activities you'll actually be able to see um, this is basically your to-do list so I'm very list orientated I make lots of lists they may be better placed in my activity list so essentially you've got your task phone call emails um, and appointments so the idea is that you can schedule these kind of for a start date as well so you don't actually have to make these instantly so if perhaps if you've got the Outlook integration going you're going to have like kind of your emails and stuff like that actually in real time but perhaps if you want to remember to schedule an email similar to how you'd write it in a draft status in your actual Outlook you 
you can do the same in CRM as well but I think where the true value comes in is the task management functionality and perhaps that forward kind of planning for phone calls and things like that and also appointments if you definitely want to make an appointment and things like that so you can obviously just like normal you can kind of use your use the grid um, and kind of filter it that way um, and also you've got this this here so you can kind of then filter it obviously all is great but the thing is if you've got quite a lot if you are doing a lot of forward planning then having things like the next seven days is quite a good um, a good indication of saying I only want to focus on this part so you're not overwhelmed by a lot by a huge workload um, but one of the um, one of the kind of other things that I don't think a lot of people realize is the views are a little bit differently in the activities so you can see here that I just clicked my activities here and it doesn't quite it's not quite the same as other views in uh, in other areas of dynamics so you can see here that you've got this little little arrow here so then you've then got your view list so this is again an, an awesome kind of um, an awesome way of getting value out of the system because it means that you can if you are just using it mainly for task management then you can just uh, quickly filter all on tasks or that you can do specific tasks as well um, as if you've got specific segmentation in your CRM system set up so um, and the same thing for phone calls so um, that's really where a lot of the value comes out and you can do the same thing for obviously all activities you can filter that as well so um, if you are kind of if you have that kind of management hierarchy set up in CRM you can things like my team members and things like that um, activities also come into um, really good uh, kind of value uh, if you was to use that so um yeah that's that's pretty much it that's kind of what I wanted to just kind of highlight because regardless of if you're working on an opportunity you can kind of forward plan on an actual record um, in kind of that sales process but if you kind of just wanted Monday morning or Friday afternoon to just quickly take a, a retrospective look at all your tasks or your to-do lists regardless of an actual record this is a great way to do it so that pretty much concludes the um, the kind of four week series for Sales 101. So it has been very light, very basic, but that was definitely the intention. So um, I hope it's been useful. And um, yep, any questions? Let me know.